everybody. Welcome to my video today and welcome to the workshop. We've got a project we're going to start working on and I'm sure those of you who are very intelligent and observant probably know what that project is going to entail. I found this set of giant chrome plated uh, table lamps at a little quick run through of the Goodwill the other day and they were super affordable, $7.00. So I thought, I stood there looking at them in the store, I don't know, for like 10 minutes because I couldn't decide if I wanted them or not. Obviously don't want to use them in this state, although if that's your drive, you do you. Um, but I thought there, you know, they'd be a good project to use some different paint on. And you can see kind of like right here and on some areas, some of the chrome has rubbed away. So... They're a great candidate for a refinish. They're a great size. They work. I already put bulbs in them and double checked. And even with lampshades, buying lampshades for them, I'm going to get two sets of, or get a set of really nice large table lamps for about $35 all in. And if any of you have looked for lamps, you know that one this size easily can run. 50, 60, 70 dollars each. So that is what I'm going to start working on. We'll film the process along the way. I'll give you updates and we'll see you then. Okay, so I'm here with the first update on the lamp project that I'm working on. And you can see here the before, which is a shiny metal kind of chrome finish. And this one is with one coat, a heavy coat of baking soda paint. And my recipe for baking soda paint is um, a half a, a quarter cup of baking soda mixed into two cups of paint. Dissolve it kind of into a thick paste, add your paint, and you know that can vary how much baking soda. Obviously, you don't want it too thick or you're not going to be able to put it on, but it, it goes on kind of like a plaster. And so what I'm going for here, I'm trying to get this to look like stone when it's all said and done and so this is one coat and I just wanted to show you guys what one coat looks like and then we're going to zoom in here real quick so you can kind of see the texture it dries very hard it sticks to glass so I figured it would stick to chrome which it is doing which is a good thing so anyway that's the first update and I'll give it another coat and we'll see how it looks after the second coat and then we'll finish it up. Okay, so here is my finished lamp and here is my lamp that I haven't done anything to. So before, after. Now what I'm gonna do is film and let you see some of the process of what it took to get this to look like this. I wanna show you a little bit of the process that I used to get that finished stone look on this metallic lamp. And you can see that I started putting the base coat on. Remember, it's the baking soda paint. So this first coat that I'm doing, it's not a pretty coat. It's just to get a coat on here to grab this metal and cover it up so we can go on from there. So when you're putting this first coat on, your only concern really is you don't want big drips. If you do get a drip, you can lightly sand it and probably get it off. But you just want to cover the whole thing with a nice coat. And you're still going to see some of the you know, it's it's not going to completely cover it. It's not going to look solid white on your first coat. So don't worry about that. You just want to get a nice thick coat on here and try to avoid a lot of drips. And then when we go to do the second coat, we're going to do some texturing of it. So we're actually going to physically stipple on here to get it to have a more stone-like look rather than just kind of a gritty finish. So when I go to do that part, I will film that as well because there's really nothing more to see here <laughs> other than I'm just gonna keep going around this until I make sure I have it all completely covered and then I wanna let it dry thoroughly. You need to make sure that all your coats in between are completely dry before you move on to the next step. Um, or you're gonna have your paint colors blending or in this case, if you start on the next step too soon, you're just gonna pull the paint away instead of letting it take the time to cure and set up on the lamp. 
So when I go to do the texturing, I'll come back and film that for you and we'll see you there. Okay, so this has been drying for mm, about four hours and it's really dry. So I know now it's safe to move on to the next spot or next part, no wet spots anywhere. So what I'm going to do on this coat is start to give it a little more body to the texture. So I'm going to put on quite a lot of paint and just kind of tamp it around. This is called stippling, if you don't know, this motion. And it's going to start to, I'm gonna to start to build up the paint slightly so that when it dries, it has more texture to it. And of course, again, now because I'm putting more paint each time, I'm going to go round and round and round and make sure I don't have any big drips happening anywhere. Um, like I said before, if you get some drips, you probably can lightly sand it and get them off. It's a little challenging because the lamp, of course, is a vertical surface. And if you try and lay it flat and do it, it just rolls around. Could you come up with some kind of jig to hold it and then turn it each time? Probably, but I'm not that patient. <laughs> so that isn't going to happen in my world. But if you want to do that, more power to you. Anyway, so this is how we build on the texture. And you can see it's starting to have more raised spots, more pitted spots. So all that when it dries is going to help when we start to put the other color on, give it its stone-like look. Now, I'm using white, obviously, as my second color. If you were really wanting to get creative, you could do three colors. You can have any color be your base color. It's what's gonna come through and what you'll highlight with at the end. So. You know, you could do green or blue or whatever you want. I just had a lot of white paint and I wanted to use white. So um, whatever your base color is, it's gonna take you two coats. One, as I showed you before, just to get everything covered. So this has something to stick to. And now the process of adding the texture. So I'm gonna let you go while I finish going round and round on this because it gets to be a bit mind numbing looking at me, I'm sure. And when I go to add the next layer, which will have some color to it, I will come back. Okay, so now that this has set up and it's got texture to it, we're gonna kind of move on to the next step, which is the fun part and kind of the part that's trial and error. So we're gonna layer some different colors on top of each other and just kind of mess around with it, trying to get a look that we like. Now. This is the one that's done. Let's see, let me scoot this over a little bit. And so obviously they're not gonna come out exactly the same. I'm just sitting crooked because my tabletop is crooked. Um, but you know, you want a similar look to the color. So now it's when we kind of start playing around with the color to see what would happen. So. Um, I'm going to be out of shot kind of here, just sort of messing around, putting some color on here. And, you know, don't worry about it because you can always go over it if you don't like the way that it looks and kind of start over. <laughs> so, which I've done many times, so that's not a big deal. But I just kind of start layering the color on. And then I kind of, with a pretty dry brush, I mean, it's not soaked. And then I have a drier white brush and I just kind of start to blend it out. And you can see how the white kind of mixes in. It makes it a different color gray than the darker gray, which is fine because you can go back later on top with the darker gray to pull that back out again. And you just kind of go back and forth with it. You know, you can stipple it a little bit. You can drag it. You can do all kinds of different things to get different texture. 
but really I just kind of go back and forth until I start to get the look that I like, which in this case will be, you know, similar to the one I've already done, obviously. And you can see here on the side where there's quite a bit of texture, how cool that looks when you drag the dryer brush over it. So kind of pulls that texture out of there. And you have some spots that have more and some that have less. And that's what gives it character and makes it look like it was done by hand, because guess what? <laughs> it is, it's done by your hand. So that's fun. Anyway, so you just kinda, I do anyway, my system is I just kinda go back and forth, layering, layering, and dragging and playing around until I get it close to what I think I want it to be, and then I let it dry, and then I can go back with a dry brush again and kind of drag over it to pull certain colors out but you could see so if you were doing more than two colors you know you would you would do your base coat and then you would do this layer and then you would do your third color lighter and then just kind of keep layering over it back and forth until you get the amounts of each color you want coming through so that is my mini tutorial on how I do a stone look on lamps that were metal. So we'll put a picture at the end again so you can see what the, um, what the original look was again. It's quite different if you remember, so that's fun. Anyway, so that's it. Uh, once they're dry and I have them all done the way I want them, lampshades on, light bulbs in, in their new home, I will add that to the video at the end so you can see them. And I'll give you a little close there. And that's it. I'll see you then. Hey everybody, welcome to my living room and the final installment on this video that I did redoing these lamps. Um, if you remember from the beginning, this is what they used to look like. We'll put a picture so you can remember and this is what they look like now you can see the finish <laughs> cured on there very nicely it's not going anywhere and it now looks like stone instead of shiny chrome which is what i was going for and it was a lot of fun it didn't take very long it only took probably about i don't know three hours or so and then you know you have to include drying time so a couple of days but no more than two or three hours of actually working on them and that's pretty great and then Dante is like moaning <laughs> he's moaning in the background every time I start to talk and then I had everything on hand already I had paint I had water I had baking soda I had paint brushes that's the only supplies I needed and then of course lampshades which I did buy and I bought them on Amazon and they were a great deal. So if you look around, you can find decent lampshades for, you know, not an arm and a leg. So that's it for this project. And if you want to give faux finishing a try, I suggest lamps because they're not very big. You can find them in abundance in every thrift store and it doesn't take a lot of materials. And just remember, it's a forgiving thing. If you do something to it and you don't like it, you can always go over it with paint and kind of start over. So that's it for this video. Don't forget to visit theredesignhabit.com for more tips and tricks. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Instagram. And most importantly, don't forget to subscribe down below if you haven't done that already. Give this video a thumbs up because it helps me and the channel. And I will see all you guys in the next video.